Hello everyone, uh, I'm Arthur. I'm very pleased to be uh, with all of you today to share a little bit of uh, my experience and uh, my vision about uh, what uh, I think uh, leadership is or what leadership should be. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a foreigner. Uh, I was born, raised and I did my studies in France, but uh, I spent most of my professional uh, time uh, abroad. Uh, for the last 25 years, I spent uh, less than three years in France and uh, all the rest in different countries, uh, being uh, based as an expatriate uh, in North, Central and South America, uh, in uh, West Africa and in uh, Central Asia and eventually in the uh, UK. So uh, what I've learned from this uh, different uh, posting in different environments, uh, I've learned few uh, takeaways about uh, leadership and this uh, helped me uh, building what I think leadership uh, should be about. Basically, this is down uh, uh, to uh, three pillars. Those uh, 25 years I talked about were uh, all spent in the extractive industry, uh, most of it in oil and gas companies and a bit of it in mining uh, companies. Uh, those three pillars about leadership uh, are uh, first uh, to understand the environment in uh, which you are working, second to understand the people and to make sure they are uh, motivated and aligned with the objective the company is setting. Uh, and third, I'm convinced of the fact that a good leader is uh, showing a good example, leading by example. So I've got, uh, I've taken few examples uh, from uh, different, uh, from my career and different experience I had to try to illustrate a bit uh, these uh, three pillars. So the first pillar uh, about leadership uh, was uh, knowing uh, your environment. Uh, this example comes from Colombia. Uh, a previous uh, general manager of an oil and gas uh, company uh, posted in Colombia, an expatriate, uh, was uh, very focused on cost and without having done uh, uh, proper due diligence, uh, decided to uh, uh, reduce cost by terminating some contracts. Uh, those contracts were uh, security uh, contracts, actually, uh, security-related contracts. And uh, very quickly, uh, the, the situation got uh, very complicated. Lots of uh, local stakeholders and people were actually uh, working on these contracts. And uh, the situation quite quickly uh, got tense. Uh, to such a point, actually, that the company uh, decided to take out of the country about the 10 expatriates they had. Uh, this subsidiary was uh, uh, 30,000 UPD, uh, 300 people and uh, 10 expatriates. So the situation got very, very messy. Uh, when I got posted there, uh, what uh, we did was basically to talk with the different stakeholders, with the different people on the site uh, in the HQ and to understand uh, the whereabouts and the whatabouts of, of the situation. Quite quickly, we decided to uh, put back in place uh, some of these uh, contracts and the situation got solved. So, uh, first thing, uh, really uh, try to understand the environment you're working in, even if uh, you might uh, have some uh, idea, uh, which seem a good idea to uh, reduce uh, uh, cost or to do something else. Uh, a good idea might not be such a good one uh, depending on the environment you're working in. So this is my, my first takeaway. My second one is about uh, the people. Uh, the biggest asset you have as a leader and what you are going to do or not do is with the people you're working with. So uh, your people are very important. You need to spend time with them, you need to understand them, and you need to make sure they're aligned with the company objective. Uh, here I've got another example uh, which uh, comes from Kazakhstan where I was posted as a um, a manager of a mining company. Uh, this company had two shareholders. The first shareholder uh, was the French nuclear state company, Arriva, and the second shareholder was uh, the Kazakh, its Kazakh uh, equivalent, Kazatomprom. Uh, so because of this shareholding structure, uh, the 
two official languages in the company were first Russian and second French. Uh, unfortunately, uh, French is not very spoken in this part of the world and most of the people starting talking with them uh, were not very motivated about that. It did not seem like a promotion to take French lessons or they did not really know uh, how this could be applied for instance. So the company was facing very big growth objective. We had basically to grow the production of uh, yellow cake uh, three times. So we had to recruit a lot of people. And very quickly we understood we had a bottleneck there. So we decided to change the policy of the company and to make Russian the first language uh, and English the second one. The people in the company started to be uh, quickly better motivated uh, because they, some of them were learning English at school so they already had some basis of it. It made more sense for most of them to continue taking English lessons to progress in the company and they also knew that Knowing English would help them if they wanted for their future to go and work elsewhere, it would also be a plus. So having done this change, we eventually were successful into recruiting uh, actually 700 people. We went from uh, 700 people and 60 expats to uh, 1,400 people and uh, 40 expats. We reduced the number of expats, which is always a motivation for, for local people. And um, uh, we were successful in recruiting all the people we wanted. So we eventually all together reached our uh, object objective. So it's very important to talk, understand uh, your people and make sure that they're motivated. The last uh, pillar uh, I talked about is about um, uh, showing examples. I think a leader should be uh, very committed, uh, get uh, ownership about uh, the business unit or the uh, team is managing and uh, uh, should lead by example. So as you understood most of the, this experience I'm talking about and these uh, different postings uh, were about managing operations in different parts of the world. Either oil or gas online. In almost every case uh, the headquarters was located in a different place from the site. So would it be a, a, an oil field or a mine each time the headquarters was in a big city and the extracting site in a remote place? And in every case uh, I met and I, I, I was supposed to do, the, there was a kind of disconnect between the management in the headquarters and the people on site. And the core of uh, an extracting company, oil and gas or mining, is where the site is, where the extraction is. So back to our first two pillars, if you need to understand your environment, you need to go on site because it is where the stakeholders are. If you want to understand your people and to make sure they are aligned, most of your people are also based at site and not based in the headquarters. So even for those two first pillars, it makes sense. So in each instance, I realized that for the company to be better aligned for having less gap between management and the people delivering the production, the OMM people, it made sense that the, there was, the management had to go more and spend more time on site for the first two pillars. And uh, for uh, making uh, the third pillar uh, working, I needed myself to go on site because you can't ask your managers to do something if you don't do it yourself. Or you can ask, but it won't be as effective. So I started going myself on site every month and then I asked my managers to do so. Quickly, uh, uh, more, pe more of the managers was going on site. The people on site were quite pleased to see management coming. What I also did is, uh, this would not apply to, to national uh, managers, but for expatriate managers this is quite important. And what I did also was, in every of these ventures, was to learn the language of uh, the local uh, people. This help getting acceptance by those local people uh, of uh, new management and uh, this together with showing example I think uh, helped uh, the whole um, uh, company getting closer together and achieving the, the objective of uh, working together and bridging this gap between HQ and site.